court papers released to RNZ News for the first time today have revealed the couple who were jailed for the manslaughter of the toddler who is being called Moko by everyone, Rangi Tohereri, were paid over $1,000 to care for him. Tanya Shaler and David William Hairewa were sentenced to 17 years in prison when they appeared at the Rotorua High Court last month for manslaughter. The papers reveal Moko's mother, Nicola, uh, paid Shaler and Tairewa to look after him. Our Auckland court reporter Edward Gay has been going through the court documents and he joins me now. Edward, there are uh, details in the court documents that were not discussed at sentencing. That's right. And th this money paid by Moko's mother, Nicola Dalipaki, is just one of them. She paid Shaila and Hairewa $1,150 over the months between June and August. And Miss Dalipaki asked Shayla to care for Moko while she supported another of her children in Starship Hospital. And while she was making those payments, uh, we now know that uh, Shayla and Haide were beat Moko, uh, leaving him with fatal head injuries, a ruptured intestine and other injuries, including bite marks on his face. And in the last 24 hours of his life, Moko was stomped on and choked. He was so sick he couldn't uh, control his bowels or stand up, and uh, Haide were responded by kicking him, rubbing faeces in his face, and shutting him in a room for hours. We also now know the pair had previous convictions, right? This is new information, isn't it? <clears throat> That's right. Shayla has six convictions for shoplifting, pretty petty stuff, but Haidewa has 109 convictions. That's uh, they, The pair's convictions run to 14 pages. That's them there. Some of those include aggravated robbery, male assaults female, possessing weapons, willful damage, breaching protection orders. We know he was a former Patch gang member, and according to documents filed by Shayla's lawyer, his re relationship with Shayla in the past had been violent. The Crown <clears throat> was opposed to these to the criminal history being released to media. Uh, they, uh, the Crown, the Crown prosecutor argued it wasn't relevant at sentencing, um, and even um, that they shouldn't be released to protect the privacy of, of Haidewa and Shayla. That's quite unusual after sentencing, isn't it, Edward? Well, it, it is. I mean, Justice Cates concluded that, yes, while, while she, uh, in the end, ruled that the, the previous convictions weren't relevant to the sentencing, she said the media was entitled to test that finding and that the convictions were entered in open court uh, and that there was strong public interest in this case and uh, in the interest of open justice, they should be released. The Crown also opposed releasing the sentencing submissions. The, these are the other documents that were released to us. Despite, and that's despite the media guidelines for prosecutors put out by, uh, the, the, by Crown Law in Wellington saying that sentencing subs can be released. Again, Justice Cates found that strong public interest, fully, inform fully informed analysis was needed and those documents should be released. What else do we know about Shayla's background now? Well, we know that uh, Shayla, Shayla's background was uh, violent. Her lawyer, Ron Mansfield, filed written submissions on her behalf, which uh, also uh, look, um, detailed uh, Morkor's background, um, saying that Morkor came from a violent home um, and that he had um, been violent towards uh, Shayla's children. Mr Mansfield said that Shayla had depression. There was also evidence of uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. Uh, she was smoking cannabis every day. She had serious uh, mental health issues. She also went um, for help to Child, Youth and Family and the Māori Women's uh, Refuge. Um, according to a mental health report on file, which Mr Mansfield cites, uh, she basically failed to remember Moko was just a three-year-old boy, that she was under financial and other stress, and that triggered rage, which, which triggered this violence. And she's uh, serving her time in the at-risk unit inside prison. Edward Gay, who's been going through all the documents. Thanks so much, Edward. We appreciate it.